Right. Bezos Hashem, today's daf is daf ayin ches, right? And we're going to just do this um, uh, Gemara, which is on daf ayin zayin omad bays. We're going to start from like 12 lines from the from the bottom. Mitzri adoy me ainun asurim. So we learned in our Mishnah uh, that um, that the Mitzri and Adoimi have a, have a characteristics that they uh, is through the third generation, as the Pasuk says, And the, our Tanakama of the Mishnah held that this third generation Mitzri, that means how do you get a third generation Mitzri? A regular Mitzri marries a Ger, because a Mitzri can marry, a, you can't marry a, somebody from Klal Yisrael, but can marry a Ger. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Mitzri. And then they, the second generation by the grandkid, that person could already marry a regular Jewish person. But that applies by both women and men. Okay? But women and men both are included in this Isser of, uh, of, of Hi, Lewis. We just began. So the, the Mishnah said, a shita of the Chachamim, that that um, the Chachamim hold that mitzvahs of the third, third generation, whether it's a Zachar or a Nekeva. On the other hand, an Amoin, a Moyav, and this is interesting, a person could com- converts and becomes a Jew. He's from Amon and Moyav. He, he's Mechaev in 613 minutes. He's like a regular Jew, minion and everything. One thing he can't do is marry a Jewish woman. So that was a Chumra that this... Uh, a male can never become part of Klal Yisrael, but the female right away could become part of Klal Yisrael. So the Mishnah said that there was a shita of Rabbi Shimon who said that uh, a woman could become plar- a woman Mitzri could right away become part of Klal Yisrael, just like a right uh, like a like an ed- like an Amoinia Mayovi, because a Mitzri at worst is three generations. So therefore, it's one step lighter than an Amoin. And yet Amoin, the women are permitted. So therefore, we can easily say that a Mitzri, the women should be permitted. So here we go. Mitzri v'adoimi einen esurin, not usher for, for to the third generation. So the Gemara begins. Again, uh, we're going on the Shita of Rabbi Shimon. So Rabbi Shimon had a Kalva Chaimer, and the Gemara asks, my Teshuvo, what is the refutation of, of Rabbi Shimon's Kalva Chaimer? Um, that he said that Mitzri and Adoimi should be very similar to an Amin and Moev. That means that only men should be Aser, not women. Um, Rabbi Babachana, um, Rabbi Yochanan, Mishim Di'ikel Ameimah, you can say like this, Arroyos Yochichu. Arroyos means that, let's say a person cannot marry his daughter and he can't marry his granddaughter, whether it's his son's, whether his son had a daughter, or his daughter had a daughter, it doesn't matter. And same thing, his wife can't marry the grandson. So it, you see that things that only apply to three generations because the great grandchildren are not included in the Arayas. Remember that it's only, the Arayas is only the th- a third generation. And we see something that has three generations and it applies for male and female. So we can say that the Mitzri, where the Torah says Mitzri, it applies for male and female. This was, was the response to the Chachamim answer to Rab Shimon and said that, no, it applies by both male and female. And therefore, we can say the same thing safely, that Mitzri and Adoimi only also apply for three generations, but it applies equally for males and females. And it's different than Amoin. Amoin only applies to males and not to females. So the Gemara asked, Ma, the Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon was going to ask back, Ma'ala Arayis Shekain Karis. The Arayis uh, situation where a man marrying his granddaughter or a, a woman marrying his grandson, that's Karis. So certainly it applies by male and female. But Mitzri marrying a Jew is only a, a iser assay. Maybe it doesn't apply to, to females. It only applies to males. So the Gemara says, Mamzer here. Let's take a look at Mamzer. A Mamzer is, 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 is something that's only an iser lav. It's not iser kares. And yet, Mamzer applies by both male and female. If a man 
is mezana with an ashes is both the offspring, whether it's male or female, is called a mamzer. So it applies by both male and female. So the Gemara says, Mala mamzer, shekain enu roi lovil kala oilam. A mamzer applies by male and females because a mamzer is an eternal uh, iser. It can never, you can never have a mamzer being permitted to marry into a Jewish girl. So it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't end by three generations. That's why it applies by male and female. So then you're going to say, Arayas Yechichu. Arayas can prove that something uh, applies, that only is also for three generations, and then stops, applies by male and female. The Tzad HaShava, that means the bottom denominator that is equal by both Arayas and both Mamzer. And that is that Sha'asurin, that both Asr, the echad zecharim, the echad akev. This applies by male, applies by females. Afani ovi mitzri mitzris. So the chachamim will say that we will include a mitzri mitzris, she asurim, a mitzri and a mitzris are both iser, and it applies by echad zecharim, the echad akev. This applies by both male mitzrim and mitzris. It applies by both. So the so the Rab Shimon who disagrees is going to ask back. Malat sada shavashem sheish behen sad kares. The, that each, if you look at Arroyas and you look at Mamzer, there's something chorus involved here. Because even a Mamzer was created through an act of chorus. Even though we're dealing with the offspring, but the act of creating a Mamzer had to do with chorus. And therefore we can say, and Arroyas is certainly chorus, so therefore we can say it applies by both male and females. But how do you know by Mitzri, which is only an essay, maybe it only applies by male and not females. Rabbonin, what is the Rabbonin going to answer, respond to that? We learn it from a cholol. Learn it from a cholol. If a cholol marries uh, a kohen gadol, marrying an almona, right? The child, the offspring, is because the kohen gadol is supposed to marry. Uh, uh, is not supposed to marry an almona, and he, if he does, he's over an is essay. The chayove essay ukrableza benyankov. According to Rableza benyankov. If if a if a kohen gadol does not marry a besula, let's say he's marrying his uh, he had an affair with somebody and now he's getting married to that person, so it's a beula, right? The Torah says he sh- the Torah says in the essay ki im besula me'amav yigach isha. He's supposed to only take a besula, and he's taking a beula. He's over an iser essay, and he gets a cholol, and it applies by both male and female. So the word cholol is very similar to mitzri. Just like a chalal, which the whole prohibition is is or essay, produces offspring that are both prohibited, male and female. So also mitzri and daimi, which is only an is or essay, will produce offspring that is also a male and female. Well, my, so that's what the Rabbanon is going to say. My loiki, what would Rab Shimon answer to that? This is what Rab Shimon says. I don't hold the Rab Lazar ben Yaakov's opinion. I don't hold that if a kain gadol marries a baula, right? He get you can produces an offspring only if he mar- marries an almana. He produces an offspring because there's an iser loisa say. But to marry a, a baula is only an iser essay, and therefore it, it doesn't produce a chalo. But you, the Svir Lechul, Rab Lazar Ben Yankov, you hold like Rab Lazar Ben Yankov. Uh, uh, so therefore, I'm going to tell you that Halacha Ani Oimer, I have a tradition. And um, here's the bottom line. I have a tradition that it only applies, the Mitzri only applies to males, not females. Tanya, we learned in the Bryce's that so. Omer Oimer, Shimon, Halacha Ani Oimer, I have a tr- complete tradition. I have even a Pasuk, Bonim Bonus. Take a look at this Pasuk. The Pasuk says that don't, don't be repulsed by a Mitzri. If he becomes a Ger, you know, Kiger, you know, you, you lived in his land. So if he wants to become Jewish, let him become Jewish. Don't, don't turn him away. But Bonim, only boys, the boys of the third generation, they can marry Jewish women. So it seems that's where Rav Shimon says, look at this word, bonim, only boys uh, are, are involved in this Isra of Mitzri. A girl Mitzris can marry a Jewish man right away. That's the opinion of, of Rav Shimon. Tanur Rabbanim, that's exactly what we say. Bonim, v'loi bonus. The, the Mitzri applies by Bonim, not daughters. Divri Rav Shimon. Rabbi Yehud, Rabbi Yehud says, 
Hakosef Tula Oram Beleido. The Torah, Rabbi Yehuda says, and this is the sheet of the Tanakh of our Tanakhamana Mishnah, that it applies to both children because the Torah says Ashi Yiboldu. No matter what children are born from the Mitzri, it uh, the Isser does apply, and that if the mother is Asr, so then any child that comes from that uh, that union is also involved in the Isser. So therefore, it applies both both male and female. Amr Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan made an observation. Rabbi Yehuda holds that what? Rabbi Yehuda holds that it applies by both male and female. Now, he loved Amr Rabbi Yehuda of Tloim Beleida, if it had not been for Rabbi Yehuda's opinion that it applies by both male and female, we wouldn't, we would not find his hands and feet in the base madrish. Why? Why? What does that mean? The whole posik, the whole concept would not make sense. In other words, if Rabbi Yehuda held that a it applies only by males and not females, then how could you have a third generation? Why? If it only applies by males, so who is this Mitzri male going to marry? Can he marry a Yisrobas Yisrael? No. Can he marry a Ger, a Mitzri Ger, or any Ger? It doesn't work because cave in the Amama, Rabbi Yehuda is of the opinion, Kal Ger, Ikri Kal. There's no difference between a Ger and a regular Yisrael. Yisraelis, there's no difference. They're all part of Kahal. So who is this Mitzri going to marry to produce a third generation that the Torah tells you is permitted? So it must be that Rabbi Yehuda holds that both the Mitzri and the Mitzris are also, so they'll marry each other. Mitzri marrying a Mitzris. That's where we the observation. We go to Amin Al. Mitzri Shani by Mayitar, even the first generation, how is it going to, how is it going to become Tar? So the Gemara says, Dilma, the over of the Nasif. Maybe the Chumash is talking about if the Mitzri did an Avera. The way he's going to get a third generation is if he married a Vas Yisrael or he married another Mitzri or Ger. So the Gemara says, the E, like Kus of Kra. The Torah never talks about uh, uh, Averas being done. The Torah doesn't discuss this topic. If he does this Avera and marries Yisrael, then his grandside is going to be permitted. So the Gemara says, no, Hare Mamzer, the E. The, the whole story of a mamzer, how does a mamzer come about? Is somebody doing an Avera being, being Mizana with an Arias of Karis, or Mizana with an Ashes Ish. The E, Uksavik Ra, the Tosik Posik does discuss things that were done by Issa. And says the Gemara, the E, Isura Kasa. The Torah does, does discuss what happens if somebody does an Issa. The E, Lehetera, Loi Kasa. The Torah doesn't describe that if somebody does an Issa to create a Heter. In other words, if the Mitzri will do an Avera and marry a Bas Yisrael or a Giyaris, then the child, the grandchild will be permitted. That, that's an odd thing that the Torah should discuss. Frank the Gemara, Hare Machse Grushos, the Ila Terah Kosve. That Machse Grushos, the Torah writes that if someone takes back his divorcee after she married somebody else, the children from that union, although the guy did an Avera, taking back his wife after she married somebody else, the child is not a Mamzer. No child is not an Usser. And, and therefore, that is, the Torah says, only this marriage is also, but the children are permitted. So the Torah is talking that you did a bad marriage and the children are permitted. So maybe the Torah is talking by Mitzri also, that he does a bad marriage and the children are permitted. And says the Gemara, no. The Torah is only telling you, telling you that a person should not take back his wife after she married somebody else. But that the point is not to create children that are going to be had there. But here, if this was the point, and the Torah is basically telling you, Mitzri, if you want grandchildren to be able to marry Klal Yisrael, you have to do an Avera to marry to marry a woman like a Bas Yisrael or a Gioris, uh, and that's not permitted. So it must be Rabbi Huda basically holds that a a Mitzri. This applies by both Mitzri and Mitzris. So to recap again. Uh, just, uh, just, we just, uh, just explained the machloekis that again, a mitzri and a mitzris is the opinion of the Tanakama and Rabbi Yehuda, who hold that the iser applies by both the the Egyptian male and female, and therefore, but it has a leniency. It only the only also for third gen for three generations. By the third generation, the grandkid could already marry a Jewish woman, unlike an Amoin. It has a stringency that applies forever. Male Amoins or male Moyavin are forever prohibited to marry Jewish women, but the females are permitted right away. 
Tanu Rabbana. The Torah, the Torah, now they were just going to darshan. Uh, look at the Pasik. The Pasik says, Bonim Ashi Voldu Lehem Dor Shlishi Yavale Mekal Shem. Children of a Mitzri that are born to you on the third generation comes Mekal Shem. So this is an odd way of saying, why does it say Bonim Ashi Dor Shlishi Yavale Mekal Shem? That should be the simply, the third generation. So that's what the Gemara is going to dash. Tanara bonum. In nema bonum, loma nema doris. In nema doris, loma nema bonum. These two words are an odd way to put out, put out there that the grandson is permitted to love a bekal Hashem. So in nema bonum, vle nema doris. If the Torah says bonum of the, the third bonum could come into kal Hashem, I would have said that if a Mitzri has three boys, one Mitzri has three boys, the third boy can come and kal Hashem. Ben Rishim Vesheni Asa Shlishi Muta. I would say that's the pshat. One Mitzri having three boys, the third boy, that becomes permitted to Kal Hashem, not to do anything with ten generations. The Kach Doris. That's why it says Doris. It has to be generation. One Mitzri becomes a Ger. He has a son. That's Mitzri number two. The grandson, that's Mitzri number three. And that's what Doris. The Im Nema Doris, if it would say Dor Shlishi, it wouldn't say bonim. I would have thought that the that that the dar shlishi means the third generation of those mitzrim that the Jews just left from the mitzrayim that they just left from. Hashem was saying, wait three generations, and then those mitzrim can become part of Kal Hashem. How would I know that this thing applies forever? Even a mitzri bizman hazeh, if he becomes a Jew. He has to wait three generations. The Kachnema, that's why it says Bonim. That's why it says Bonim. Now, why does it say Lehem? Why does it say Bonim Ashivoldu Lehem? It says Lehem twice in the Pasuk. What is Lehem? So the first Lehem teaches you Mehem Mene. The, we count the generations from the first Mitzri that, did, became, that became converted. He's Mitzri number one. His son is Mitzri number two. And his grandson is ready, Mitzri number three, permitted to become a Kalashem. That's what Lehem teaches you. What does Lohem teach you? Halech Acha Pesulem. You go after the, the, the puzzle. That means if a Mitzri would marry a Yisraelis, let's say a Mitzri does marry a Yisraelis. Then an Aveira, they married to each other. A rabbi married them. So then the child is a Mitzri, not a Yisrael. That the, 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 the dominant DNA is the, is the Mitzri. The Itzrech Lemicht of Lehem, the Itzrech Lemicht of Ashi Vogel. The E, why does it have to say Lehem? And why does it have to say Ashi Vogel? Well, I, I, I would know just by reading the Pasik that the account from number one from the Mitzri himself and his child is Mitzri number two. The Ikas of Rachman Ashi Vogel, Havamina, I would have thought, Mibne You start counting Mitzri number one is from their children. That's Mitzri number one. And then you have to wait to the great grandson. That's why the Torah says lehem that the mitri that converts first that's 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 called first generation. Because of Rachman lehem, the Torah just wrote lehem have a mitri mitri muuberish this guy who bena chad. I would think that a mitri that is pregnant and at one time she became a ger. Do you count them as two or count them as one? Because of Rachmana. Ashi Evoldu, they counted as two. So if a pregnant mitzvah became uh, a ger, so when she gives birth, already that's uh, generation number two. That even though when they went to the mikvah, they're like a one piece, but as soon as she's born, it's born, it's, it's generation number two. The Yitzrech L'michtev Lehem, Hocha, the Yitzrech L'michtev Loi, Gabi Mamzer. The Torah tells you two ideas. That the dominant DNA when any of these pesula marry a bas Yisrael is the apostle. So if a mamzer marries a bas Yisrael, the child is a mamzer. If the if a mitzri marries a bas Yisrael, the child is a mitzri. And the Torah tells you those two ideas by both mitzri and mamzer. Why do you have to tell me that idea that the dominant DNA is the psul by both of these cases? So the Gemara says the ikas of rachman hacha. If the Torah would just write by a mamzer. The Torah writes loy, that you always look at the dominant DNA of the mamzer because mishim debom, a type of pusula. I'm sorry, uh, 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 by Mitzri, because the Mitzri comes from a type of pusula. His father was a Mitzri, so he was a goy. And therefore, his dominant DNA, if he marries a Basis Yisrael, is more powerful, and the child is a Mitzri. 
But Avil Mamzer, a Mamzer, his father basically was a regular Jewish person. His father did an Avera, but but he's the father is a regular Jew. The Balmatipa Kasheri, he comes from a, a, a pure drop, a, a kosher drop of semen. Aim a loy. Aim I think that if a Mamzer marries a Yisrael, even Israelis, even though they're not supposed to, I would think that the child is not a Mamzer because in the DNA of the Mamzer, he's a he's a Tipa Kashera. That's why the Torah says that no, by Mamzer, the child is a Mamzer. Because Rahman and Gamma Mamzer, if the Torah wrote this idea only by Mamzer, Mishum de Ain Because a Mamzer can never come into to the Jewish world, can never marry a Bas Yisrael. He's it, it's infinite. So therefore, his if a Mamzer does marry Israelis, the child is a Mamzer. Abul Hokha by a Mitzri, since we know after three generations, after two generations, the third generation is permitted to become a Kalashem. So if, if Mitzri from the first generation marries a Israelis, I would think the child is not a Mitzri. We, 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 he's like a weaker form of Psul. Aim Eloi. So that I may think that, the, that this Psul would not be dominant. Tzricha. So that's why we need both to, to tell you that it's dominant by both by the Mitzri and the Mamzer. That if, a, if either of them marry a Yisraelis, the child is the apostle. Now, Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, it's just a quick question. I'm a little I'm confused. So uh, you have, you have uh, the, the first one that converts. Does, it, does, does the woman, have, does, does the Ishmit, the uh, Mitzria, does she have to convert as well? He can marry a myth, he can marry a ger. A Mitzri that converts, an Egyptian that converts can marry a Japanese woman that converts. And then the child is okay. to so, as long, so they both have to convert no matter what. And then right. the second generation is automatically Jewish, but he can't marry, he still can't marry a, a Yisraeli. Has to wait for the third one as well. But do the do the offspring have to convert as well? Or not? They don't. No, the, 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 the funny thing about these all this com- conversation is. They are Gerim. They're regular, regular Jews. They have to keep uh, Shomer Torah mitzvahs and their Shabbos okay. and everything. Okay, but 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 the, but, 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 the fir- but the first generation that that, that converts that is a Ger, his child doesn't have to convert because he's marrying a, a Geris is also Jewish, so he's Jewish. Right. They, he, he's Jewish by birth. He has a bris milah. Right, right, right. They just when you say enter the call of Israel, it means that he just can't marry an Israeli. Right. That's what it is. Okay, okay. But w- till now, we, we discussed that if they did an Avera, let's say the Mitzri married a Yisraelis, the child is a Mitzri. We don't say, oh, the mother has good genes. We go after the mother. We, uh, the Torah tells you that the Pesul is the dominant gene over here. But Amar Rabbi let's say this case, Mitzri Shani, a Mitzri of the second generation, Shinasa Mitzri Rishayna, that married uh, the first Mitzri of a first generation. So what would you call that? The, the father is a second generation and the mother is a first generation. So Benosh Lishi, the, third, the, the child is a third generation as the child is permitted to marry a Jewish woman because we go after the father. The father is the dominant force over here. According to this version of Rabbi Eichmann, Alma, Kosovar, Abbasidi, Deishadim, that we always go after the father. That's what we see from this, uh, uh, that the father is dominant. So even though if you looked at the mother, the kid should be a Shani. No, we, the father was a Shani, so the kid is a Shlishi. Most of Rav Yosef, you tell me that you always go after the father? I'll tell you another story. Rav Tarfin, Rav Tarfin said, Beautiful thing. A mamzer can have kosher Jews offspring. How is that possible? And that, and that that offspring, a mamzer could have a son, basically, that can marry a Jewish woman. How is that possible? Ketzat. Mamzer nosa shifcha. A mamzer marries a shifcha kananas. So a shifcha kananas is like a quasi-Jew. Havolad evid. The child is a slave, right? Because it's owned by a master. And if the shicharoi, and if the master frees him, nimsa ben chorim, then he's like a regular Jew. So therefore, therefore, and he can marry anybody. So, but when the marry, mamzer marries the shifcha, the kid is not a mamzer; it's a eved, a, a slave, and he loses his mamzer, even though his father was a mamzer. Almost, so we see from Raptarfin, We go after the mother, not the father. Answers the Gemara, Shana Hasam. By the case of a man marrying a shifcha, you go after the mother, Dama because there's an extra pasuk. 
The child, the woman, the shiks, the shifcha, with her children belong to the master, that the, that the children go after the mother of a shifcha. It's separate. Normally, you go after the father. Let's take a look. Masav Rava. Amar Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Rava said, because there's a b'risa that says, Rabbi Huda said, Binyamin ger mitzri hayali chavim mitalmide Rabbi Akiva. In my class, I had this person called Minyamin from Mitzri. And he was he was a ger mitzri. And we learned by Rabbi Akiva together. Vama, and he used to say, Ani mitzri rishim and a sasri mitzri shayna. I'm a mitzri from the first generation. And I married him. I'm going to marry a mitzri from the first generation. Asi libni, then I'm going to have a child. Mitzrishniya, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my son marry a mitzris from the second generation. My son from the second generation will marry a woman from the second generation. So my great grandson can marry, marry a Jewish person. That's what he said. So wait a second. Why does his son, the Isal that if you go after the father, then why should his son marry somebody for a mitzrishniya? He can marry a mitzvah rishayna because you go after the father. I feel a rishayna nami. Even if he would marry a mitzvah rishayna, since he's a mitzvah shnia, the child will be a mitzvah shlishis. So why did he say, I'm asi lebni mitzvah shnia? And for the Gemara, ha'amale rabbi echelantana t'nei rishayna. Exactly. You have to change it. That he said, my son can even marry a mitzvah rishayna. So again, till now we learned the version of rabbi echelantana that you go after the father. Now we go another version of what Rabbi Yechenin said. Ki asa rabdimi am Rabbi Yechenin. Something about Rabbi Yechenin. He had all these Talmidin coming from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, and everybody said something different what Rabbi Yechenin said. He said, Mitzri Shani, Shinasra Mitzri Shashayna. You have them fathers of Shani, and the married of Mitzri Rishayna. So, Bena Shani, you go after the mother. The child is a shani have it. Alma, so we see Basa Ime Shadina Leb. Now uh, uh, we go after the mother. Now, why would we go after the mother? Because a child is like a chip off the old mother's block. That's what the Gemara is like lear- learning. And therefore, it's like a, imagine a block of wood and it's you're slicing off a piece of wood. The, so the, the the child is not coming from the father. It's really coming from the mother. That's called uber yerech imoy. The child is more very closely related to the mother. Amaleah. So that's what Rabbi Yechonim must hold. Uber yerech imoy. So Amaleah Abayas. Abayas said, I'm going to find you a place where Rabbi Yechonim says uber lav yerech imoy. Uber is not, the, the child has nothing to do with the mother. Elahodam Rabbi Yechonim. Rabbi Yechonim said, "Hifresh chatos muuberes violda the rotsa." A guy gave his mafresh a chatos, a pregnant chatos, right? Uh, so now he, he an animal. Let's say he says a, a female sheep to be my chatos, and the sheep is pregnant. So now violda and gave birth. So now you have a choice. Rotsa mischapa ba. You can you can if you want bring the carbon from the mother. Rotsa mischapa vloda. You can bring the carbon from the from the child. That's what Rabbi Yechonin said. So now, this statement of Rabbi Yechonin would only make sense if he holds uber lav yerech imoy, that the child has nothing to do with the mother. The amr bishlam uber lav yerech imoy, the child has nothing to do with the mother. It's not a con- considered like an appendix of the mother. It's just a separate entity. Havale, the case when you mafresh a pregnant animal, kemafresh techatoris lachrais, it's like you're saying, I'm, I'm, I'm separating these two animals, the mother and the, the fetus, to be my chattis. And whichever one I'm going to choose, that's that's right. And the other one, I'll just redeem. If you take two, if you mafresh, you, you did an avera, you're supposed to bring one carbon chattis, and you set aside two, you bring a kapar from one of them, and the second one, you just lay out the pastor, let it get a mom, and then transfer the kedusha onto money, and then you can eat that animal. Nothing wrong with that. And then what, what are you going to do with the money? Bring, give, bring a carbon oil with it or whatever, because you already have a chattas. El, that was, so that makes sense if Rabbi Yechina holds Uber Lav Yerech Imai. El, if you can say Uber Yerech uh, if, if Uber is the chip off the old block, so Havale Vlad Chattas, then it's really this mother having given birth is, 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 is giving birth to another chattas. Vlad Chattas Lemisa Azal. And we know that if a chattas gives birth, 
you're supposed to kill, you're supposed to let the animal starve. In other words, if a man, a man uh, was separated one animal to be his carbon chattis, and then it became pregnant and gave birth, there's a lach lamayish masinai, that that offspring has to be put into a pen, let it starve to death. So that's lamisa azal. It's not something that you could redeem. So that's only, so therefore in this case, when he was mafreshit and it was a pregnant chattis, if you hold only if you hold uber lav yarechimaihu, that's when you can eat, you can actually you know benefit from this from the child from the from the offspring, but if you hold uber yarechimaihu, you can never benefit from the offspring. So ishtik, so Rab Oven was mis, uh, quiet and didn't uh, answer him. He didn't know. You're right. I from what I'm what I'm saying, Rab Yechon says uber yarechimaihu. And from another statement of Yechimen, you think Uber Lav Yerachimai. Amale, so Abaya answered his own question. Question. Dilma Shana Hostam the Ksiv Ashivoldu. Really, Uber Lav Yerachimai. But by Mitzrim, you go after the mother because the Torah says Ashi Yavoldu, the child that is born. A cause of Floyd Belay that the Tosik uh, uh, hinges it on the mother, the one that's giving birth. So when a mit, you always go after the mother, whatever the mother is. That's what you go, go after. Amale, so Rav Ovid, Rav Ovid was so proud of Rabbi's uh, uh, tarots, his answer, Kakapona, Amude. In other words, you must have heard this tarots from somewhere. Maybe your 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 rabbi, your Rebbe, was there when Rabbi Yechenin said that. That's the difference. Real. So it seems to me that what he's saying is that your tarots is so good that uh, somebody must have been there at the Shia when Rabbi Yochanan said it. And that's how you came up with such an answer. The, the reason why by Mitzri you go after the mother is because it says Ashi Yivaldu. In all other cases, you go after the father. Now, if you always go after the father, right? So then let's let's analyze this. Hod Amar Rava. Rava made a, a, a halacha. Goya mu'uberis. Let's say a woman that is a goy and she's pregnant. She wants to become a ger. She is gyro. So then she goes to the mikveh as a fat pregnant lady. When the child is born, bona ain't tzarchtvila. The son doesn't need to go to the mikveh anymore. Amai ain't tzarchtvila. It's not part of the mother. So you just told me that it's just a separate entity, and it's a chatzitza basically. This. Baby is supposed to have a, a go into the mikvah and it's in his mother's stomach. Are you going to say it's not a chatzitza? That there's no chatzitza over here if you're not so concerned. And here, the child in the mother's stomach it doesn't really concern itself with chatzitza. It wants to be there. So it's not considered an, inter- an interruption in the mikvah. We go to Ahmed Bey's. Rav Kahana, Loishan el Rubai, Avakulai Chaitzitz. But if uh, we only say that Rubai, if something is Roy and you're not Makbid, for example, you have grease all over you and you're not Makbid, you don't, you're not, you're not concerned about it, then you could go to the mikvah. But if something covers you entirely, like the baby in the mother's st- stomach, certainly is Chaitzitz, certainly should be a Chaitzitza. And says the Gemara, Shani Uber, the Hani Rav, you say, the reason why it works when a woman go- was pregnant goes into the mikvah because that's the way the, the child grows. It really, it's not considered a chatzitza. I'm not sure. It's just the way it is, it, the growth of the baby is inside the stomach. He's not a live person. So it's not considered to be a chatzitza if the mother goes to the mikvah on behalf of both of them. Nugamara, we, we always say that we go after the mother. Let's say by uh, going marrying a Jewish woman, the child is a Jew, right? By Jewish, we always go after the mother. But by Goyim, we go after the father. Let's see. When it comes to Goyim, you go after the father. You go after, if they become, both become a ger, you go after the worst one. What does that mean? What the Bryce has said is, we know that from the seven nations, you're supposed to kill them out. The seven nations that lived in Israel, you're supposed to kill them out. Let's say uh, a Japanese guy who became a, uh, a Japanese guy married a, uh, 
a Kninus, right? Kninus, one from the seven nations, and they have a son. What's the din of the son? Is it a Kninus or is it Japanese? Is it you go after the father? That, the Kiddush is you go after the father. Since the father, you don't have to kill. The son, you don't either have to kill. Because the Torah says, those that are come to live in Eretz Yisrael and become citizens of Eretz Yisrael, usually the foreigner becomes citizens to where the mother is. So therefore, the Torah says from them, you can, their offspring, you can buy a slave. In other words, that which is exactly what we're saying. A strange, like a Japanese man marrying somebody from the Shiva Sa'amen, that child has a din like a Japanese person, and therefore you don't have to kill them out, you actually can buy them as a slave. Yachal in the opposite scenario. Let's say it's the other way around. A Knaini married a Japanese woman, right? We're not talking about Gerem. They married a Japanese woman. Is that child a Knaini or a Japanese? There it says you're not allowed to do buy it as a slave. Because when the Knaini married the Japanese woman, he must have flew to Japan to marry the that woman because you go after where the mother lives. And, and they came back, the son came back. He wasn't born here, he wasn't a Toshev here, he came back to live here. So that son already is, is somebody who is is uh is not born in Eretz Yisrael, but he was born somewhere else. And therefore, uh, you go after the father in that scenario. And the father was a Kanani, the son is a Kanani, and you're not allowed to buy him as an Ebed. In fact, you're supposed to kill him. If they become, become a Gerim, you go after the worst one. What are we talking about? What happens to Mitzri, Banneries, and Amoinis? So, you, obviously, you go after the Mitzri, and the kid is a Mitzri. But my pogrom shebishneim is bay. What, what, what does that mean? You go after the worst one. Amoinis is totally permitted. Why is that worse? Amoinivle amoinis. Ella, look at this case. Ba'amoini shnasa Mitzris. And Amoini is somebody who can never marry a Kla, somebody from Kla, Yisrael. Marries a Mitzris. What is the child? Is the child a Mitzris or an Amoini? So then we say you go after the worst one. If the child is a male, then it's an Amoini, and it's forever, an infinite can never come into Kali Yisrael. But if it's Nekeva, you go after the worst one. You don't go after saying, oh, Nekeva, it's an Amoini, and he can marry somebody from, from, from Kali Yisrael. No, you say it's a Mitzris, and she cannot come to marry a Jew only until the third generation. And let's just do a few more lines, two more lines, and we'll stop. Mamzer unesinim asurim visurin isa oilam echad zucharim vechad nekevis. That you know, a mamzer, any generation of a mamzer, mamzer marrying a mamzeris, mamzer marrying ten generations can never and and somebody from the seven nations, right? Uh, uh, from nesinim, there that forever and ever can never marry a Jewish woman, male and female. Amr Shlakash or Shlakash made a comment and he said, Mamzeris Lacha Saradaris Muteris. The 10th generation of a Mamzeris could marry somebody from Klal Yisrael. Why? Yalafa Sirisima Maini Maivi. Malaha Nekavis Mutaris, Afka Nekavis Mutaris. We learn out a Gzeri Shava. Here's the Gzeri Shava. It says, here's the Gzeri Shava. Loyovid Mamza Bakala Shem, Gam Dora Siri for the 10th generation. And we know it says a Pasik, Loyove Amaini Bakala Shem, Gam Dora Siri. So just like by Amayni or Mayavi, women are not in, included, so also by Mamza, we'll say women are not included, but only after the 10th generation. That's what we're saying over here. Would you say by a Mamzeris right away that the Kavis are permitted, just like it, like, just like it is by the Amay? No. Ki ahani shava From the 10th generation and on, um, the, from the 10th generation and on, only then the mamzeris is permitted because we have a gzeris shava to amayni that that the women are not included, but not right away. Only from the tenth generation and on. Says the Gemara, is that true? This is the chiddush of Rosh Lakish. We have a Mishnah that says mamzeris nesina siri so oilam echad zuchar It implies forever. They're forever aser. 
and, and, and not after, even after 10 generations. So the Gemara says, Kasha, that's not difficult. In other words, according to according to uh, according to our Mishnah, we we would say we learned the Gazer Shava, but you, you, you don't apply it to this place. In other words, there's two ways to learn Gazer Shava. One, you take everything from from the other side, and you say. And you say, uh, whatever applies over there applies over here. So here, we'll also say that mamzeres, by the women, they become permitted. Or you can say, no, we're just learning one specific thing from the Gzeri Shava, that mamzer applies even after 10 generations. That we see, basically, you always need to learn this Gzeri Shava, because the Torah doesn't tell you how many generations is a mamzer aser. But because it says, by Amin Ad Oilam forever, so we learn Gzeri Shava, Darasi, Darasi, that mamzer also applies forever. And that's the opinion of our, our, of our Mishnah. Okay, one more, one more line, and that will end it. And so just to end off on a, on a high note, an interesting note. Amr Abzeira. Amr, uh, uh, sh- I'm sorry. Uh, they asked Rabbi Eleazar, a mamzeres, after 10 generations, what will you hold? You, is it permitted or not? A mamzeres. It's impossible for a mamzer to survive three generations, let alone 10 generations. Alma, so we see from Lezer, he said a fact. God will never let a mamzer have a long life. A mamzer will never live. So you basically only have one generation. If somebody is a mamzer, he dies young, and that's it, he, he, without children. Wait a second. Mamzer can have children, and their issue is forever. So what do you mean a mamzer can, dies young? says, This is what the explanation is. If everybody knows that this person is a mamzer, Chaye, he will live. The loyedia, but if nobody knows, then Hashem says loy chaye. Hashem will take his life away because Hashem doesn't want this person to marry somebody, and then Claudius' role will be full of mamzerim unknowingly. So if he's an unknown mamzer, he's not going to live a long life. The idea of loyedia, if some people know about him and some people don't know about him, at chaye, chaye, then they will only have three generations, a grandkid, and then the whole family will die out. So that's what it is. Ahu, the Hava, there was this mamzer, the Hava shifted the Rabami in the in the neighborhood of Rabami. Allah, they made an announcement. Everybody should know the mamzer Ahavi, that he's a mamzer. That's embarrassing. The guy was crying. Rabami said, I'm giving you a long life. It's because everybody knows that you're a mamzer, Hashem's going to keep you alive. Because if you're not, if nobody knows your mamzer, Hashem will give you a premature death. I think uh, that the halach is that by a mamzer, by his bris, they, if it's a mamzer, and there's a bris, they make the announcement, everybody should know that this kid's a mamzer. And this will bring the kid a long life based on this Gemara. Okay.